Hello everyone, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy and the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson. Remember to be successful in this course, there's three key parts. Number one is these videos, number two is the Epic Online course, and number three is reviewing this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. Our topic today is gyroscopic flight instruments. So let's start by looking at the gyroscopic flight instrument power source. What are these gyroscopic flight instruments and how do we power them? Well, first of all, what's a gyroscope? Take a look at this diagram. A gyroscope is something that if we spin it fast enough, it maintains what we call rigidity in space. Now we can use little toys to get the feel for this concept. We can take a spinner or in our uh, diagram here we've got a little top and if we spin it fast enough that spinning motion will cause it to hold its position in space and that's what we mean by rigidity in space. Now these gyroscopic instruments take advantage of that principle. So there's a little gyroscope in these instruments and that gyroscope needs to be spun quickly. Just like the little toys we were talking about where you spin them with your finger, these need to have a power source to spin them. Here's an overview of that power source. <clears throat> Traditionally, these gyroscopic instruments were spun by air being sucked across the gyroscope. So instead of your finger spinning the gyro, the air pulling across that gyroscope spins it real fast. In this diagram, you can see the pump motor. Notice this pump motor has a spline shaft. That's where it's splined into the gear case of your engine, and the engine turns this air pump. Well, when I say air pump, that's literally what I mean. Let's take those words and reverse them. It pumps air. It pumps air and throws it overboard. Well, if you follow this diagram, where is it pumping air from? We'll follow these blue lines all the way back to where they start, and the air is being initially pulled in through this filter. Now, that air is pulled in through these filters and it's pulled across this attitude gyro and across this heading indicator gyro. And it comes through the pump and overboard. Notice there's only two other items in that system you have yet to look at. One is the pressure gauge. Now this pressure gauge, it's not really a pressure gauge, it's more like a suction gauge. It works the same way in reverse. Instead of measuring the pressure of the air going through it, it's telling you the amount of vacuum of the air being sucked through it by the pump. Now we want to be able to maintain a certain amount of vacuum in this system and that's the final piece here and that's the vacuum uh, regulator valve so uh, a mechanic could adjust that valve to make sure that that pump is sucking the proper amount of suction through that system and that'll show up on that suction gauge now that system powers two out of three gyroscopic instruments as we just discussed, and you can see again in the schematic, it powers the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. Well, what's the third gyroscopic instrument? The third one is the turn coordinator. You can see a picture of that here. Now, the turn coordinator is not powered by the vacuum system. Well, why not? What's it powered by? Well, it could be powered by the vacuum system and the reason it's not powered by the vacuum system is just in case there might be a vacuum pump failure which means the pilot would lose both his attitude and heading indicator and we don't want to have the pilot lose the turn coordinator so 
we use a little electric motor to power that turn coordinator. So you see the system overview and you see the three instruments, heading indicator and attitude indicator, both powered by suction. And then the third instrument, the turn coordinator, powered by electricity.